So, Lord, we have come. We are willing. Help our willingness. We have come, Lord, and submit ourselves to you and say, have your way in this place. Amen. You are welcome in this place, Lord. And may your name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We continue with our state of readiness. A state of self-examination. Stop taking. When one takes stock of the relationship with God and try to examine if you actually is working in spiritual agreement with God or not. The only reason why we say that God has called us, if you look at Romans 8, 29 to 31, it says, unto those he foreknew, he also called them. And the reason why God called anybody or calls anyone is that the person may be predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. And that image is the image of holiness and righteousness. The image that was lost when the original man, Adam, offended God. And from that very time of Genesis up to Revelation, no, from that time of Genesis up to the time of Christ, God, in wonderful mercy and grace, continued to send in prophets, teachers, preachers, for one purpose only, to get their children to turn away from their wicked ways and return to him. That is the only purpose of God. So that's why God has called us. This very evening, we will summarize briefly what we did. We're going to continue to do that every week as God allows us so that those online, if there's any question whatsoever, we need to have it. So we'll summarize the points of last week and there are three points we're going to raise right here. Number one, who is actually a Christian? That was the question last week. Who is a Christian? Now, I know that this is very, very, it's like somebody asking, wow, why do you say who is a Christian? After all, we are all Christians. Yes, we are all Christians. But who is a Christian? Not for those who call themselves Christians are Christians, but those who do the will of God. We start from there. You know why this year, the Lord Almighty will make us ready so that we do not labor in vain. So that we do not labor with the wind. That's the most important thing. It's a terrible thing to run a race and then lose the price. It's a very horrible thing. So who is a Christian? How can we define a Christian? Simple definition. A Christian is one who is in what? In oneness with Christ. A Christian is one who is in spiritual agreement with Christ. If you are not in spiritual agreement with Christ, you are not a Christian. Now, somebody may say, whoa. Let's read John, please, 831. John, John 831. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. If you abide in my words, you are my disciple indeed. In other words, let's put it this way. If you, are done, if you don't abide in my word, you are not what? And who is a disciple of Christ? Huh? Follower of Christ. Which means that the follower of Christ is the one who is good, a Christian. Let's, let's make sure we get this right right now. If you abide in me, only if you abide in me and my word abides in you, then indeed you are a Christian. You are, you are a disciple of mine. Read me John 15, 14, please. John 15, 14. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you. If you don't do what I command you, then you are not my friend. If you don't do what I command you, then you are not my friend. That's a very serious statement to make. You know why? If you look at John 14, 23, he said, those who obey me, my father and I will come in and live with them. But those who don't obey me, those are the ones who don't like me. Can you read that, please? John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said to him, 
If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. We'll come to him and make our homes with him. So a Christian that is going and walking and doing this contrary to Christ is against him. It's not a Christian. I want to make sure we all understand because we need to make sure we get that right. Because Christ says one thing. Whoever is not with me is actually against me. You cannot be against someone. And they must like they tell us one thing. They say, one, for two to work together, they must be in agreement. With that agreement, we go to church and waste our time and say we're Christian, but we're not Christian because we're not working according to the will of God. So that's why if you look at what John 14, 15, Christ said, if you love me, the only way you can demonstrate that is to obey me. Because why? That's how Christ demonstrated his love for his father. Give me 14, 31, please. John 14, John 14 31. But that the world may know that I love the Father, mm -hmm. and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from this. This is the only way the world may know I'm together with my Father. Because I obey my Father, so I just stand up there and claim and say, I and my Father are one. If I'm not one with Christ, I'm not his follower. A Christian is one who is a disciple, a follower of Christ. Christ-like in all things. And that's why he told us, well, if you want to be my disciple, the same way I walked, you must do the same thing. Give me 1 John, please, 2, 6. 1 John 2, 6. Yes. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Also to walk just as he walked. And he talked about belief. If you say you believe in me, it's not what you believe with your mouth. Is what you do in your heart. Because you know one thing, a tree is known by its root. Whatever you produce is going to come from your heart. And not what you put in. You will profess that. In fact, Paul was just saying it. Timothy, read me Timothy, please. 1 16. Timothy 1. 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. I mean, sorry, Allah. Titus 1 16. Sorry. Titus 1 16. Yes. They profess to know God, but in works they deny Him. In works. I say I'm a Christian, but in works I deny him. If my works will deny Christ, I become a very dangerous Christian. In fact, it's better for me not even to be a Christian than that I'm the one who is so dangerous. I'm there doing the thing that people will see me and say, look at these people who every every day they carry the Bible and profess to be Christ, Jesus Christ, Christ, but they are different by what they do. So Christ himself, the Bible told us that he learned through obedience. He has to learn obedience. That's the only way he can relate to the Father. Let me Hebrews 5, 8 to 9, please. No, only 8. Let's go. Hebrews 5, 8. Mm -hmm. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. He learned obedience. Through obedience, he was one with the Father. And that's why he could be able to claim that. If you want to be a Christian or you're a Christian, it's only walking in obedience with Christ. Because that's the only way to abide. Give me nine. And having been perfected, mm -hmm. he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. No, he became the author of eternal what? salvation to those who profess him. No. no. To those who say, Lord, Lord. No. No, I just want to make sure that the world understands that right now. He said, only those who what? Obey. Obey him. And Christ told us that if you abide in me, you are a Christian. Let me put it that way. Or my disciple. But how do you abide in Christ? I just speak that we move on. Let me first John please 324. First John 324. Yes. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. Let me ask you this. If anyone claims to be a Christian, but Christ does not abide in him, is he not? Is he, is he a Christian? No. Now, please, let's get this right. He said, 
This is the way we are binding him if we obey his commandment. And if we do so, he will abide in us. And that's what makes us, that spirit that's given to us is what makes us what? When you are, and if anyone lacks that spirit, give me Romans, please, 8, 9. Romans 8, 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. He is not his. This, we're, making, we're just giving a summary, but I think this is as clear as we can put this. If anyone has questions, maybe later on we can stay inside. But the problem we have, and this is the problem we all have, this is a problem in Beko's Roomba house, okay? This may be the problem. Is that actually, we are Christians. You know the Sunday, Sunday medicine. Yeah. <laughs> all we do that, let's go to church and hear what they're talking about, and then we come back, we don't obey. That's not a Christian. We're just wasting our time. You see, what we do most of the time that is really very unfortunate is that we're keen in hearing, but not in doing. We're always lying, but we never come to the knowledge of the truth. And the only way to come to the knowledge of the truth is to do and live the truth. So that's why James was telling us, quit deceiving yourself. Give me Romans, please. 2.13 Romans 2.13 For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. Amen? Amen. James 1. 21 to 25. <laughs> James 1, 21 to 25. Yes. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, mm -hmm. and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. The one who is a doer is the one who is blessed. We're always learning. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about here. In churches, we're always learning. You go there thousands, filling the church to hear the message. We say we're hearing the message, we're learning. But we never come to knowledge. We only go to church and that's wisdom. Remember we dealt with wisdom before. Why is it wisdom? Wisdom is like, okay, you know what? It's good to go and go to church and join and hear about the word of God. But wisdom has, is actually of no what? Benefit and profit whatsoever, except there is understanding. The knowledge of God. Read me Proverbs 9, 10, please. Proverbs 9, 10. Yes. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The knowledge of the Holy One, that's what is understanding. What is that knowledge? That's why Christ said, you don't want you must know the truth. You must know the truth that you must live the truth. It must be the truth. You must live it. You must become the truth. And then, only then, that you may be set free. Because of doing that, which God wants you to do. And that's why he said the knowledge of God is actually what is called eternal life. Read me John 17, 3, please. John 17, 3. Yes. And this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That they may know you. The only way to know God is to love God. To love God is to obey Him. There is no way we can remove any of them. Love is not perfect, as far as God is concerned, except you obey. That's why Jesus Christ was telling the Jews, you think you know this God, you call your God. But you don't know Him, and they were not very happy with Him. Let me John 8, 55, please. John 8, 55. Yes. Yet you have not known him. 
but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. In honesty, how many people do you think, and I don't give me an answer, that run around and say they are Christians all in churches, that actually can claim the know God? That's where the main thing is. When one doesn't know God, he doesn't know, he will never see that. That's eternal life. That's the most important thing. And to know God is to obey him. Read me please, First John 2. First John 2. Yes, 3 to 5 or 6, it doesn't matter really. So just 3 to 5. 3 to 5. Now by this we know that we know him, mm -hmm. if we keep his commandments. He who says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. Yes. By this we know that we are in him. By this we know that we are in him. Whoever keeps his word and his commandment. Now let me tell you this. Whoever claims to be a Christian, let me go to the room by particular, claims to be a Christian and continues in the old way and continues to sin, does not even know God, has never even met God, has nothing to do with God. So how can they just claim to be a Christian? Let's read 1 John 3, please. 6 to 10. 1 John 3, 6 to 10. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Let's stop right there. Whoever has not seen him or known him, can that person claim or she claim to be truly a Christian? The only way you can get this and is one with Christ. Now, somebody may be listening to this now and say, ah, come on, is he trying to say he's a, he's a holy one going to heaven? I'm not trying to say anything. All I'm just saying, this is the word and the truth of God, and God is not going to change for a miracle of the and it's not going to change for you. We we'll never change for America or anybody. God is God. And as long as he lives and he lives forever, his word stands forever. One who says he knows him and God is to say, but I have not met him before. He's just claiming. The worst thing a human being can do is to deceive himself. That's all. The worst thing I can do is to deceive myself. To walk around saying, I know everything is okay. I'm going to church. I'm naked. Oh, oh, every Sunday, let me run there. Sunday, Sunday, let me take my Sunday, Sunday medicine dose. You know, I take it and the malaria will go. But then whatever the situation is, what God is looking is a heart. You need to come to him in obedience. There's no other way to follow him. Go ahead, please. Let's finish that. Verse 7 to 10. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. Let's, stop, let's stop right You Go ahead again. Sorry, I'm, I'm interrupting you. Who, who sins? That means who if it seems is not a price, all right? We, we all agree with that. Yes. So you can see what I'm saying. Except you obey him, then you are not with him. And you're not a Christian in reality. He may be with your mouth. You claim to be a Christian. And God, if you look at Matthew 15, 8 and 9, we don't got to go to it. He says, these people, they approach me and they come to me with their mouth. All they do is with their mouth. But their heart is different. And in vain. All they do until the diet is in vain, unless they change and begin to have this understanding. Why this kind of word coming? From the day that the Lord called me up to this moment, this message has not changed. It will not change. The maker's room by life is not going to change. You know why? The message is not for everybody. The message God has called me is not for everyone. It's for those who are specifically touched and given the spirit of understanding. Because if you look at that Matthew 13, 11, they say, no one thing, unto you, unto you as special, unto you that are drawn special to me, I have given the power to understand the mysteries. But unto others, it is vanity. Because it is a parable. It will come. They will not hear it. The word is for those who are so desirous. The word and the message you're getting from here are for those who are so determined and willing to enter into the kingdom of God. And it is not easy. That's why even when we read the scripture of Hebrews 5, 8 to 9, it says that Christ's life will be the true word. Suffering. 
But what is it? What is suffering? Yeah, I know. What is suffering for Christ? Christ, God, the, Christ, the will of the Father was all that Christ did. He will suffer for it, just like you will suffer following God. But in the end, he's still not the one who's called the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. It's still Christ. So what am I saying? The message is not everyone. If you look at Paul, 1 Corinthians 13, 11, please. We've left this one. Don't worry. Don't worry. God bless you. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. Mm -hmm. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I put away childish things. The problem with most of us who are Christians is that we will never grow up. You know what we do? We are the captive audience. Let's go there, we sit down there. And you know what they call it? We swallow this hook and we swallow the what? The line. No, yeah, yeah. You know this hook and sinker? I'm talking about the feature. Okay, whatever it is. No, this one is not even the line, it's sinker. The big thing that falls is we swallow whatever comes. Oh, yeah, the preacher is talking about because we don't have the spirit of God to question what somebody is talking about. This individual preaching contrary to Christ. Why would I listen to the person? I shouldn't if I'm a Christian. That's why if you look at 1 John 4 1, he said, Well, unto you is given to question the spirit that's speaking to you. Even right here, even right here when we present the message, as I sit down here talking, question it. If anything is contrary to Christ, don't accept it. Because there is no other way. That I'm talking now to Christians. So that's only way we can follow things. Are you with me? Yes. So let's leave that now. The second one. Is the one we battled with. And I gave only about three, three answers and two remaining. The scripture said one thing that's scary. That's why we all of us is one all of us. In 1 John 4, 16 to 18, he said that it is time the judgment of God will start. And it will start where? From the house. But let's read 18 again. 1 Peter 4, 18. Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, <coughs> where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? If the righteous one is scarcely saved, it's scary. The scripture says, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, and you see this people all claiming, hallelujah, we're already in heaven, it's all about grace. You know one thing, one save, always save, we are there already. Oh, we are there already. You better walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because God is the one who will not say that the righteous will be scarcely saved. So we get threatened. Number one, if the righteous, that was the first one, right? If the righteous trusts in his own righteousness and then commits sin and dies in his sin, he shall go to hell. Yes. Ezekiel 33, 12 and 13. We cover that, right? Yep. If the righteous feels that he has arrived, mm -hmm. I got it, I stand. You know what? No problem. You know what somebody told me? One pastor told me somewhere, and I shook my head. I said, God, please have mercy. He said, As for me, he was talking about himself, not me. He said, Sir, As for me, I have my ticket to heaven already. Wow. You have your ticket to heaven already? He said, Yes. And you are still alive. <laughs> what I'm saying is this. Anyone who thinks he has a right will surely fall. Because God is on such a his ways are not our ways. And we reviewed what? Many other things we reviewed. First Corinthians 8 2. Mm -hmm. You want to read that quickly? Okay. First Corinthians 8 2. Mm -hmm. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. First Corinthians 10, please 12. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. Galatians 6, 3, please. Galatians 6, 3. 
For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. You know, like most people that say they are servants of God right now, have completely elevated themselves mm -hmm. to the, the height of God. If you, the, you elevate yourself to that height, where is Christ then? That's why I tell them, whenever we go to the, the mission, I said, wow, this is what is going on. I said, you know one thing? You want to know about me. Why do you want to know about me? I can do nothing for you. You better hear the word of Christ and follow Christ. Because if I make myself something, then where do I put Christ? So if anybody thinks I'm right in that righteousness, and they will cover it in that situation. If the righteous, if he forgets to his own detriment, that salvation is to the end. That salvation is to the end. Anybody who tells otherwise is not telling you something that is true in the word of God. Christ, Jesus Christ said it in Matthew 10, 22. Matthew 10, 22. Yes. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. But he who endures to the end will be saved. The one who endures to the end shall be saved. Let me 24. Let me Matthew 24, 13. Matthew 24, 13. Yes. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. So who's saying all this? Jesus. Jesus Christ. And the revelation is also the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Let me Revelation 2, please, 26. Revelations 2.26 Yes. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end. Until what? The end. The end. Yeah. To him I will give power over the nations. So when actually the righteous forget that this race is an endurance race and this race must be to the end. If you forget that, it's finished. Okay? The third one, or the fourth one, actually, we have covered three before. If the righteous ever turns back, if the righteous ever turns back from following that highway of righteousness and holiness, a Christian is supposed to be an embodiment of the truth. That's living the truth. Unto Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith, the hope of our, of our world. Salvation. If he turns back, it's not what Luke 962, please. Luke 962. Yes. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Anyone who looks back all the way, even Joshua. <coughs> you look at Joshua 1 7. He tells Joshua, he said, Joshua. Said yes. You must never turn to the left or to the right. <coughs> you must never look back. But you must follow that which is in front of you. This book of the law. Oh, you have that already. Okay, go ahead. Joshua 1 7. Only be strong and very courageous mm -hmm. that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. But Christians, most of us, you know what we do? Compromise. We chip in here, we chip in there, we do this and that, and we think that's going to work. We think we can eat. No, not cake. <laughs> we can eat cake and have it, and we drink. Both cups. You know one thing? The cup of the world, that's very good. The cup of Christ, that's very good. And Christ said that that cannot work. First Corinthians 10 21, please. First Corinthians 10 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. Amen. Amen. Don't look back. Then the last one. When the righteous ever forget one thing. Or let me put it this way. When the righteous takes God to be familiar. Familiarity. Familiarity is one thing that can destroy anybody, any moment. Because with familiarity, you become complacent. You begin to think, oh, no problem. That's the same thing. Familiarity is one that, that is why 
The scripture warns us from the beginning. Read me Psalm, please. 211. Psalm 211. Yes. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Serve him with fear and rejoice with trembling. Whenever the fear of God departs, God has departed. Please, my brothers and sisters, listen to what I'm Whenever the fear of God departs, and what's the fear of God? Proverbs 8, what? 13 tells us the fear of God is to depart from evil. No matter whatever we're doing, we say we're righteous, everything is working well, all of a sudden, we begin to really change and begin to turn back and look at things that are evil. God cannot stand evil. So he tells us, when you are serving me, you better fear. He's not saying that you should be afraid and say, every time, no, if I do this, God will kill me. God is not my life. God is a very faithful and very merciful God. But you know one thing? God hates evil. And he wants us to depart from it. And that's a fear. So Paul again tells us, give me Philippians 2.12, please. Philippians 2.12. Yes. Verse 13. Yes. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, mm -hmm. work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why would Paul say this? Work out your own salvation. Paul knows that maybe some of us we claim to be saved. But he said, you know one thing, you better work it out with fear and trembling. Because if you don't, you may lose it. Are you following what I'm talking about here? Yes, sir. If you don't, you may lose it. That's exactly what happened to the children of Israel. Because of time, we're not going to read out. If you look at what Matthew 8, 11 to about 13, you see where it said, You, the sons of the, you know, people will come from the east, they will come from the north, they will come from everywhere. Can you read it? Okay, you have it already. Matthew 8, 11 to 13. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. Mm. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion. No, that's all right. That's all right. Now, try, let's, let's get this. It's so scared. You know, people will tell you and they preach. And they want the audience and the congregation to feel so happy. You know what? You're already in heaven. Don't worry about it. Whatever you want to do, you're already saved. Once saved, you're already saved. And Christ was saying, the sons of the kingdom... I, I, I wasn't the one who wrote that. The sons of the kingdom will be cast out. And the same fact was telling us in John 15, 1 to 2. He said, you know what? I am the vine. You are just a branch. You know one thing? He said, look, any branch in me that does, I'm talking about the branch already that is in him, that does not produce fruit. I've got it out. Are you, are you all with me here? Yes, sir. Serve him with fear and trembling. And Peter was also telling us, be careful as you serve God. First Peter, please, 1, 13 to 17. First Peter 1, 13 to 17. Yes. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Mm -hmm. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. In fear. Mm, the, same fear. Kind, the same fear. I don't know, we can go on and on, but there is no point because we need to finish the thought then. In fear. Always. You know why we have to conduct ourselves as we live here in fear? If anyone, if you look at Isaiah 55, he said, you know one thing, my ways are not their ways. As, you know, <laughs> as heaven is way above. Nobody can tell you, you know, I understand God, everything. Oh, yeah, God. No, 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 no. This God which is always fear and tremble before him. Even the mountain, they tremble. The way trembles. And human beings who are supposed to be the most intelligent. No. 
we rebel against. It's to work with God every day. When he sees that you are serious and you are willing, and you are saying, Lord, I need you, he will help you to walk that, to take that journey and finish it. Now, the last one, and I think there were questions, a lot of questions in this one, but this is the new one now also. Whatever you do, my brother, and I've been talking about churches, and I said, if you are in any church or any denomination, listen to me. The reason being that time, I thank God. I don't have to worry about number or anybody to come here. If you don't want to come here, don't come. It doesn't take anything away from me. But woe unto him who will turn away from the truth. Because he may never return to that truth. So, if you are in a church or denomination and you know it's not conducted according to what? The truth of the word of God. Get out. Before it is too late. That's what I'm going to tell you. As you would, it's better for you to come up here. And, okay, let me put it this way. Christ said, it's better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one hand only. Or one eye only. Than you go to hell. Body. Yeah, with everything together. It will not work. Why am I saying this? Some of us may claim, oh no, we're not partakers of evil. I want you to know one thing. If you're not a partaker of evil, glory be to God. But if you are a partaker, if you have fellowship with the partakers of evil, you're a partaker of evil. Are you following me? Yes, sir. So please, what I'm saying here, be diligent enough to watch and to question whatever you are going through. Because as far as God is concerned, God says, judgment will come, and it will be to start from my sanctuary. And the sanctuary of God is you. I want to let everybody know one thing now. Give me Ephesians, please. Five. One to eleven. Mm -hmm. Ephesians five, one to eleven. Yes. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Mm -hmm. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. <laughs> Let no one deceive you with empty words. Mm -hmm. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were Stop once... Right there. Sorry, Sorry, my dear. Do not be partakers. What? With them. With them. Do not be partakers with associations of the world. You may be that. Read me on 11. Let's, start, let's, start. let's read 11 and move on. Verse 11. Yes. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose, expose them. them. Have no fellowship. My brothers and sisters, listen to me. It has nothing to do with me. God didn't call me for a church. <coughs> he said, I didn't call you for a church. So you don't have to worry about my inviting you to come to my church. But one thing is, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Because if you do, you will be guilty as well. A thief and his accomplice. I don't know, that I've left law practice for a long time. Are they not the same? They are the same. They are the same. Now, let's put it in. Do you know one thing I want to tell you right now? And with all humility. And I thank God very much. Because I've been shedding tears because of this. Do you know the worst violence against the kingdom of God now is the violence within? Do you know that? Yes. I want to please realize that. The violence within. The churches and the denominations are the people really perpetuating the worst violence. Because when we are not here speaking against churches, Please, if I do, that will not, I will not be a servant of Christ. But there's no one thing I want to tell you. How many churches today 
that can stand and claim to be churches of God and not churches of men and churches of tradition and churches of money and covetousness. How many? That's what I'm asking. A church of God is a church that does things according to the will of God. And the man of God is the one who serves God according to his will in righteousness and holiness. Most churches now, what you see here is exactly what Jeremiah, Jeremiah was crying about this, and I cried about this. Christ also cried about that. All he's speaking now is what? Peace, peace. It's well. You know one thing? Whoa, feel good. Everything is wonderful. Be what you can be. You want to be a millionaire? Yeah. Look, all you have to do is set your mind on that. Nobody wants to set mind on high anymore. It's setting mind on the things of this world. And Jeremiah saw this thing and said, Whoa, what's going on here? Okay, Jeremiah 6, please. 13 to 16. Jeremiah 6, 13 to 16. Because from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. But they have also healed the hurt of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. At the time I punish them, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Ask for the old path, the one that Christ came down from heaven and told us that is a way, that is a highway. It is narrow, it is straight. Follow it. And there is a highway of righteousness and holiness. Isaiah told us the same thing, in Isaiah 35, 8, and said, you know what, that is a highway there. It's a highway of righteousness and holiness. The unjust will not come in there. But no, in churches now, all we hear is that, oh, no, 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 no. there's nothing like that anymore. Righteousness is something of, of it's a pastor. You want to be this legalism. You just want us to, you preach only what they call <laughs> They say, you preach holiness and righteousness all the time. What do you want me to preach? <laughs> because that's all that Christ preached. Without it, you can get anywhere. As far as God is concerned. But they commit all these things and they turn around and say, you know one thing, it's well with God. It's not well with God. Read me Jeremiah 7. <laughs> Jeremiah 7. Yeah, it comes up from, from verse 1. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll change it for you. Go ahead. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah, who enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Do not trust in these lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, and if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, or walk after other gods in the, to your hurt, then I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Mm -hmm. that, 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 from mine, go ahead then on to, and that's all. From verse 9. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, and walk after other gods whom you do not know, and then come and stand before me in this house which I called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations? Mm. Has this house which is called by my name become a den of thieves in your eyes? Behold, I, even I, have seen it, says the Lord. But go now to my let's, place. Let's, let's stop right there. Shall we go and do all these things we are doing? Conducting ourselves, the tradition of men, walking all sorts of things that are abominable unto God, 
preaching that which we cannot preach and going against Christ and saying it's okay and stand there and say God is with us. So what I'm saying is this. If you go to where the truth is not presented and practiced without compromise, then get up and find your way. <coughs> the biggest problem that God has right now in many churches are preachers. Am I preaching? I don't know if I'm preaching, but God knows that whatever I'm saying, whatever word I say, judges me. I stand by that. And that's why he told us, let me Jeremiah 12, 10, please. So you need to examine what you hear and what you're hearing wherever you go. Jeremiah 12, 10. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate world. Many pastors. And sometimes you wonder and say, how many of these people serving God are truly called by God? And that's what you have to worry about. If you can't find the truth, stay in your place and lock yourself up. I am telling you right now, because God says one thing, and it's going to happen. He said, when my judgment comes, I will punish the deceived and the deceiver. I will punish the deceived and the deceiver. And what is the problem with many churches right now, and even pastors, is that you know one thing, we strengthen the hands of the wicked. We tell the evil, yeah, it is okay. You know one thing, if you want to live with your boyfriend and girlfriend on the church, it's a fine. Whatever man you want to do, you put just same self, same self what? Same self marriage. Go ahead and do it. It's okay. Because right now God has changed. You know one thing, we have to follow history. Whatever anybody wants to say, what I'm telling you is this. Whoever strengthens the hands of the wicked is not serving God. Jeremiah also said, let me read Jeremiah 23, 14, please. Jeremiah 23, 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. Hmm. They commit adultery and walk in lies. Hmm. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none does return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. The church is the one that's supposed to turn people away from their wickedness. But when we compromise and welcome whatever comes to, say, to the heart of God, that's not the way it works. And we make things worse. Because when we do that, we encourage people to continue to be in disobedience. And that's the problem that actually happens. But then let me ask you this. What is the church of God. We talk about church or church, everybody says, do you know one thing? That the greatest church of God is you. Please get this thing now. Because God dwells in you. So that's why I tell people, before you get up and get ready, I'm going to church. You better search yourself. Because if you are not the church of God, you are wasting your time there. Is this, is this making sense? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to church. I'm going to church. It's okay. But have you said, are you the church? Because God does not live. We said, well, don't forsake what? The fellowship of brethren. But who is the brethren? <laughs> Those who are of the what? One mind doing the will of God. But if the bread not gather in the name together of Christ. What makes a bread? You may be having fun. You know what's going on right now many times? Most Sundays now is a social networking. And instead of where you go and worship God, it's a social system. Let's all get that together. You know one thing, I've been going here all the days of my life since I was born. When were you born? You don't even know. So you just want to tell God you've been there. When God is saying, you know one thing, I don't care where you're going. The time has come for those who will worship me, the true worshipers. They will worship God in spirit and in truth. Not a church. So what I'm saying here is this. In you, is a church that must be holy and righteous. 
That's where God lives. Romans 12, 1, please. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. That is what I am crying unto you right now. No matter where you go, whatever you do. We say this year is going to be our year of readiness. So we must be prepared for anything that God is going to throw on us, get us ready. Prepare yourself. A holy, acceptable sanctuary of God. That God may come in and dwell. So at any time, any moment, you are ready. That's why Christ said, watch you and be ready. Watch you and be ready. Why did he say that? With Matthew 24, 44, right? Matthew 24, 44. Therefore you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Your body is the church. is the holiest temple. And that's where you should start. Most of us will talk about, well, we go and preach to others and talk to others. But we forget about one thing. That charity begins where? That's, right. that's why Romans 2, 17 to 24 says, you who teach and preach, don't you teach yourself. It starts with you. And God said, you know one thing, I don't do in the house. What? You're my man. man. But in him, Isaiah 66, 1 to 2, that's what he said. But it's, look at Hebrews 3, 6. Hebrews 12, 3-6. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Firm to the end again. The end comes in again. Whose house we are. First Corinthians, please. 3-16. 1 Corinthians 3.16 mm -hmm. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Do you not know that you are the, the holiest temple of God? There is no cathedral, there is no church that should ever come close to you in holiness. But God does not judge a building. Are you, are you following me? God does not judge a building. He said, I will look at the man that has given everything. And you know one thing? Even the Pharisees, there were so many woes that God proclaimed against them, right? Why? Because the Pharisees, they said one thing and they did another. But even the woes, when we, do, when we say one thing now and do another, our own woes is worse. Why? Because we what? We have no more excuse. John 15, 22 says, if I had not come, then they have no problem. But after that, if they continue, they have no more exchange. So our body should be the holiest thing. But I want you to know one thing. The reason why I'm going to continue with that, I don't want you to associate with or have fellowship with the partakers of evil. Is that when God punishes, he will punish the deceiver and the deceiver. We'll come to that and we'll go and explain it completely. We'll punish that. And you know one thing? God says what? If you look at that first, same first Corinthians 3, 16 to 17, but 17 now. First Corinthians 3, 17. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. But who is the one who can destroy the temple of God? The one that builds it? Yeah, I know, like that, but who can destroy the temple of God? You? Yes. But there's one way you can do it. You can do it all by yourself, you can do it association. But do you, have you ever thought why? In every situation you find yourself, the evil is always working so hard to destroy the good. Anytime you have the good and the evil, the evil will work harder to destroy the good. Paul was even saying that. Like Galatians 4.29, right? Mm. Galatians 4.29 But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, mm. even so it is now. Even so it is now. Have you ever noticed that when you have association, mm. 
you come here, you hear the word, good word of God, and then you go in somewhere else, and something else is preached. All of a sudden, all that you got probably finished. Yes. Even when you have, when you have association with the world, like you go out there, I belong to this club, I belong to that club. They are always working hard mm -hmm. to get you in. The devil, that's his work. He has to destroy the good. That's the work of the devil. Every time, every moment, I'm just telling you right, right now. And who's going to fall victim? Usually that individual who is So please, we're going to stop here. I know this year, I thought last year was tough, tough, straight, up year. But this year, God has started one more time because he loves us so much. He loves us so much, he's trying to let us understand that the time has come for us to have understanding and the reality. And that's why he said, unto whom I chastise. That is a very clear evidence. I love the person. I love those I chastise. Because when I chastise them, they will accept it with thanksgiving. But if you chastise a fool, you hit you on the head. And you don't want that to happen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this very evening. Forget speaking to us. It's all about you, Lord. Mighty God, let not any word proceed out of this place. Except the word that is from you. Only you, Lord. Teach us, mighty God, we are teachable, we want to learn. Father, bless your children who are here. Give them the spirit of understanding. We are children online, please, my Father. Give them the spirit of understanding. We want to know you, and the only way to know you is to love you, and the way to love you is to obey you and to do your will. Lord, we are willing. Help us, Lord, mighty God, who is in heaven. I pray you, Father, that you will not let any of us run this race in vain. For you are the only God and the only hope we have. Take all glory and blessed be your holy name in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.